Yo, Elliot, does one discover his purpose or do you simply decide what your purpose is? It's a little bit of both, my man. Earlier when I spoke about exercising feminine receptiveness, this goes in hand in hand with when I say, allow yourself to be and receive your purpose or allow it to come to you or allow it to unfold, right? A lot of times what we try to do is push the river. You ever hear this term? Push the river. Like the river's going, the river's going, the river's flowing, but in our impatience, in our misunderstanding and in our ignorance, we're like, come on river, we're trying to push the river. What do you, what's gonna happen when you push the river? Well, number one, you're really not gonna make it go much faster, right? Because I mean, what are you gonna do, right? It's the river, is the force of nature. You doing this is just splashing, you're just making a friggin' mess, number one, right? You're not going to get anywhere doing it. It's silly. Number two, you're going to burn yourself out, right? You're going to burn yourself out. It's like, what are you doing, bro? The river's going. Chill. And number three, disorientation. Why? Because you're in the middle of the river trying to push the thing, and you're getting so tired that you're turning around, and you're, you're, you're sucking wind, and you're going blank, and you're like, <sighs> trying to make something happen that's happening anyway in its own time. We're trying to get there too fast a lot of times, right? I gotta discover my purpose. I gotta find it. Rather than allowing the river to bring it to you and the river will always bring it to you. The problem is that we're so busy pushing that river that we don't step up and look around, right? Imagine you're that idiot in the river trying to push the river and the river's like carrying you along as you're pushing it, right? And then you just stop for a moment. You're like, oh, I just can't, I can't do this anymore, right? This is normally what happens to people anyway in their lives. They just overly, just overdo it. And then you get to the point where you're like, oh, 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 I can't do it. And then you stand up and you look around and you realize, where am I? What is around me? What's available to me right now? Well, I didn't notice there's fruit trees over there. Well, I didn't notice that there's a, there's a canoe over there. I didn't notice that it's about to rain soon. All of a sudden, I'm starting to notice the terrain. I'm starting to allow life to be revealed to me. Why? Because I'm not so anxiously pushing or grabbing or trying or reaching. I know that the world makes it such that that seems sexy. Go get it, go grind, go fast, go hard. It can be sexy, but you can also overdo it. And most of the time, with many of us, I'm not talking about guys who have no motivation whatsoever, because you have two different types. You have people who are like, too much, and you got people that are too little. I'm talking to you guys that are just too much, that you burn yourself out, and I can relate to that. Oftentimes, I'm just too much. So trying to discover your purpose. I don't like that word discover so much. I like the word allowing your purpose to be revealed to you, just like that guy that comes up out of the mire, comes out of the muck, comes out of the river, he looks around. Look around in your life. Your purpose is always revealing itself to you increment, incrementally, right? The picture may be blurry, right? Like, for example, I knew that I liked strength training when I was 14 years old, right? That was revealed to me. It was very obvious. I looked around. I was like, wow, I have weights. I like lifting weights. I have fun lifting weights, and I have a mentor that teaches me how to lift weights. I also enjoy teaching people how to lift weights. I had a sense that lifting weights had something to do with where I was going in the future, but today, I lift weights for myself and I own a couple gyms, but I spend most of my time speaking to young men. How did that happen? How did that, how did that purpose show itself to me? Well, I followed the river. I followed the steps. I started training people in the park with trash. I was training mostly men at the time because I was training football players and baseball players and then their dads would come. So it just, I was just surrounded by men. Did I choose that? Like you say, did I decide? No. It just happened to be what it was. I looked around one day and I was like, wow, I'm surrounded by men. Then by and by, the young men would come to my gym and they would ask questions. Hey, Elliot, you know, I'm having this problem with my girlfriend. Hey, Elliot, I'm having problems with, with my parents. I'm having problems with school. I'm having problems with work. Well then, the natural progression for someone who's just paying attention is, you know what, I, I, I think I'm being called to mentor to young men's heart and soul. I think I'm being called to mentor to men, not just in the gym with the muscle, but also the mind, right? It was kind of revealed to me. I didn't one day say, this is what I'm going to do. It showed itself and I followed the path. This is gonna to happen to you too. It's gonna to happen to you if you're paying attention.
And if you put yourself in the river as well, that's the other thing too. Because there, there's, there's, you know, there's two extremes. Like I said, there's the guys that don't even get in the river and they stand on the, they stand on the bank and they're like, oh, what am I going to do with my life? I have no purpose. I don't know where to go. I don't like anything. I don't want to do anything. And it's like, because you haven't jumped in yet, bro. What does jumping in look like? It looks like something different for everyone. Jumping in might mean join a club, join a gym, join an organization, go to school, get a new job, start in the gym. You see what I'm saying? Various things. That means, okay, I'm getting out there. People who stay in their home and they wonder why nothing's happening in their life is because they're not getting out into the world. They're not going out there and doing stuff, being around people, taking advantage of opportunities, even recreation, right? Recreation leads to your revelation. Lifting was rec recreation for me. I just wanted to play football. I wanted to have fun. It was a fun thing. Recreation. Your recre what kind of recreation are you involved with? Even that word recreation, it's a beautiful word. It means to recreate. How are you recreating your essence in this world? That's what real recreation is. Recreation isn't laying at a fucking pool with an umbrella and a, and, and a fruity drink and getting drunk on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That's not recreation. That's taking time off, right? That's just, I just call that taking time off. I didn't call that a vacation. This is just, you're just taking time off. Recreation is let me recreate the image in my soul out in the world. In my soul, I love baseball. I can't help myself. I just love baseball. I love watching baseball. I like watching baseball videos. I like swinging the bat. I like throwing the ball. Right? That's recreating in my life something that's calling me. Now, me, I never liked baseball. <laughs> right? I'm just using that as an example. It never called me. Football called me. Right? What's calling you in your life? What are you being asked to pay attention to in your life? Where if you pick up your head from the incessant pushing or from the lazy standing around, where from that place when you pick your head up or you decide to jump in, do you find yourself? Purpose is always there. It's always available to you. Purpose is moment to moment too. I want you guys to recognize this. This is very important. It's sexy to have a grand vision. I get it. I get it. It's sexy to have a big vision. And sometimes it's good to have a big vision. But to be caught up in needing to have a grandiose idea about where you're going in your life. Down to the detail, some people tell you you need to have. Down to the detail of what's going to be like. Can also be a source of distraction. Because your head is so much in the clouds that you don't actually do anything right in front of you. You can't see anything right in front of you. So you got the river and you got the clouds, right? You can be in the clouds too. Too much time in the clouds. I spend a lot of, I, I speak to a lot of guys and I get a lot of emails from you guys and it's all about my vision, right? And sometimes these are, these are grand visions. And you know, I don't want to denigrate anybody and tell them not to have big visions, but when your vision is outside of your capacity to reach it, Leave the vision alone for a minute. Be grateful for it. And come back down to earth and become capable of that vision. I'm going to, you know, what's a grand vision? I'm going to build a multi-million dollar car sales business, right? Because my grandfather, or I don't know, whatever it is, but you're, you're, you're called to that, right? You see that, right? But then what are you going to do? What are you doing day to day? Can you even fix your own car? Well, no, I can't fix my car. Well, then how do you expect to, what are you talking about? You're living in the clouds. You're not actually doing anything. Boots on the ground. Your purpose, I'm saying a lot here, bro. I'm dropping a lot of gems too. Your purpose is right under your feet. Your, your purpose is where you're being purposeful. Let me put it that way. Where are you being purposeful in your life? Where you stand, are you being purposeful with where you stand? I have all kinds of visions for my life here on the ranch. I'm reading books and I'm daydreaming. In fact, yesterday I spent most of my day daydreaming about what I want to build here. You know, I went out to the warehouse. I'm daydreaming what I want to build there. But there's a space between where I am and where I'd like to be that requires I put two feet on the ground and be purposeful with what I do in this moment. You know what being purposeful in this moment might mean to me? Mowing the lawn. Well, nobody wants to mow the lawn. But that's what's in front of you right now. And you want this whole thing to be grand and beautiful. Mow the friggin' lawn. This is why I like it when Jordan Peterson says, clean your room. <laughs> right? 
I, you, I'm envisioning myself living in a mansion, a big, beautiful mansion with servants and maids, and right? You have this grand vision, but it's like, but look around you, bro. You haven't brushed your teeth yet. You haven't made your bed yet. Your house is a mess. Your girlfriend's cheating on you. You're, you're, you, you, you're not there. Start paying attention to what you got going on in front of you. Where are you being purposeful, right? Where are you being purposeful? And then, you, 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 the second half of your question is, right? So we're talking about discovering your purpose. But the second half of your question is about, do you simply decide what your purpose is? Not so much as you decide to take action in the direction of your purposeful stance. Deciding where you want to be long term, grand vision is not purposeful. It's daydreaming. It's good. It's, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it per se. But deciding to be purposeful means today I'm going to take XYZ action. And tomorrow I'm going to take XYZ action. And for the next five years, no matter what happens, no matter how I feel, no matter how confused I am, no matter how tired I am, every day I'm going to do XYZ. You know what happens when you do XYZ? Let's say when you lay a brick every day, right? XYZ is laying a brick. You know what happens when you lay a brick every day whether you feel like it or not? eventually that all those bricks stack up and next thing you know you're looking around and you're like what? i mean i actually built this thing i actually built this thing right but it's the deciding is about today the deciding isn't about am i going to marry a blonde hair blue eye christian girl or am i gonna marry a brown hair green eye olive skin muslim girl Right? Like, I don't know where I'm coming up with this. But basically, it's like neither of them mean anything because nobody is, you're not even working on your value as a man. It was like, you can't even go that far yet, bro. Brush your teeth. <laughs> right? Brush your teeth. So you, you decide today to take action, and that is your purpose. That's being purposeful, bro. So I hope that offers some insight to you in your current situation. Allow it to unfold, but you got to pick your head up and you got to look around you and you got to be realistic. Nobody likes that. Again, in our daydream Mickey Mouse Disney world, nobody likes the idea of being realistic. I never did. I never liked the idea of being realistic until real, until real smacked me in my face. Right? That's called humility. And we'll all be humbled, especially those of us who are proud and prideful and arrogant, right? Like myself. Reality will smack you. And either tell you, get up, you lazy bastard, or it's going to smack you and say, calm down, you hyperactive bastard, <laughs> right? So don't get carried away with yourself. Just one foot in front of the other, brother. So I hope that helps, man. I'm done. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.